you follow me on social media, you know that I usually post my plays every single day, whether they're winners and losers, and I usually recap them in about a minute. Now, this was a pretty big trade. I did post the gains, but I didn't make one of the small one-minute summaries that I normally do because I wanted to actually go over why I took it. Here's a screenshot. It were puts on JP Morgan. I had four of them, and I closed the uh, position up about $600. And so I want to make a more in-depth video today. Um, a lot of this is predicated on the video I made last week that's titled my $1,000 spy puts. Um, in that video, I go over where I see the market in the next three months and why I bought puts, which are actually up pretty big today. So first things first is this is JP Morgan, right? Now, like most banks, JP Morgan follows spy and just the overall market. Like, just the, if the overall market's up, usually banks are, are overall up. And so... Let's take a look at this chart. This is the daily chart on SPY. Um, you don't worry about these buy and sells. Sells. That's where I, you know, I, I normally put my day trades to so show you guys where I bought and sold. But obviously, this thing is overbought. Uh, the past, you know, couple days, the the market has been really, really. You know, overall, the market has really been predicating and hoping that this trade deal will happen. And now it seems as if Trump is saying that he wants to wait until after the election to have this happen. And so now the market is freaking out. And also, we have tariffs that are going to go up December 15th as of now. And China saying that, hey, we're not doing a trade deal unless you don't bring those tariffs up. And it seems like Trump is going to make those tariffs go up. And uh, so... <laughs> Sentiment is not really that well in the market nowadays. Just just in the past two days, I mean, we've sold, look at this. Past two days, the market's dumped 2.2%, which is a lot for SPY. So JP Morgan, I noticed yesterday the whole market was selling off. Uh, Goldman Sachs was selling off. Wells Fargo was selling off. A lot of banks were selling off. And I was like, why is it what JP Morgan was like up like 0.3%? And then, it, you know, it... it dumped a little bit, like being down like half a percent and then it closed right around even. So I was like, all right, JP Morgan obviously has been on a, a huge run. Um, I think it could pull back. Now I went in with about $800, which is more than I wanted to. I wanted to go in with about 400, but my conviction was pretty high on this. And to hit my break even, it only had to go down about 1%. So I was like, you know what? The risk first reward is there. And that's something I talk a lot about, but that's what's important. If you're, you know, think about it this way. When you think of risk, risk versus reward, if you're risking $100 to make $50, right? Is that worth it? No. No, I mean, even if your odds are high still. But now imagine with the same odds, if you're risking 100 to make 200 Okay, so now the risk is worth it. And so the, how I looked at it was like, all right, I don't see JP Morgan and the whole market ripping tomorrow cause unless like some news comes out. But as of now, and, and think of this psychologically, right? Like let's just even go back to spy. Cause like I say, all these candles represent, it's the psychology of the market. So if you look at it, like the market has been moving up because people have been optimistic on trade. Uh, earnings were really good. The Fed has cut rates three times in a row now, even though they say they're not going to cut um, coming up. And sentiment has been pretty high. Well, now, once there becomes, you know, a little blip in the market and now the trade deal doesn't seem like it's happening, this is where the money starts getting pulled out like nobody's business and there's nobody here to catch it. Nobody is going to start buying in to save this thing, I don't think, at least until about 300 unless something happens. I don't know. We're, we're going to see. Like I said, you, you can't can't always, um, you know, predict the market because at the end of the day, like, I, none of us really have enough money to to time and predict the market. We're really just all following the sharks who have the big money here. So I took that trade. JP Morgan sold off heavily. Like it was down 2% this morning at open. And so that is right where I sold right like around 129, 26. I closed up $604 and uh, that's a great trade. But Personally, I still see this market falling. I do have SQQQ in the public account. I think we're up like $300 on that. And I do have those spy puts uh, that I talked about in that video last week. We're up like $300 on that too. So I did sell JP Morgan uh, while I think, you know, I was in the money at the time. Well, I do still think we're going to see this whole market sell off. 
the risk versus reward isn't there. I already have SQQQ. I already have spy puts. So I don't, I don't really see me being so heavily leveraged to the downside in case, you know, something does happen and Trump says, all right, we're going to get a trade deal done. And the market's a crazy place. It's a roller coaster and it's all a game based upon news and yeah, analytics. But that is why I took that trade. And I'm telling you, sometimes this is just gambling. Like, yeah, I had high conviction in this play. And yeah, you know, like a lot of indicators saying, you know, the market's oversold or overbought. JP Morgan's overbought. We're looking for a pullback. But like at the end of the day, a lot of it is just luck and discipline. Being disciplined to cut your losses, let your winners ride, and even sometimes cut your winners. Like today, if I wouldn't, I mean, let's take a look at the one minute here. I sold right here at 129.41. If I would have held and sold at the best time at 128.60, I probably would have made another 300 bucks. But I was more than happy. Uh, if you guys have any comments, uh, make sure to subscribe to this video and make sure to subscribe to this channel. It really means a lot. It's very, very, very important. Like I'm trying to build a community with you guys and the algorithm really predicates upon likes, comments, and shares. And I just want to make everybody better you know like i want you guys to have more money i want you guys to learn how to trade i want you guys to build a skill that will last you the rest of your life that will help put your kids into college or help them start businesses or you know help sick family members like that's what i'm here for if you guys have any questions comment them down below and i'll see you next time